So, you know, Cynthia um, kind of um, kind of made this game weird. I really, really should start off with just saying that there was a generation where the pseudo legendary was an Uber by by a technicality directly. There was nothing stopping it. Garchomp was just immensely powerful from the get go, and it never really got like nerfed ever. There had been no real scenarios where I would say that it's gotten nerfed, but rather there had been scenarios outside it that maybe made it more manageable at times. Because that's the thing with Guard Jump. It might be manageable at times. Hell, it is so, so incredibly scary to fend off against, and uh, there is really no reason of doing anything but cover the perfection of the mom before even going on to whether or not they've been efficiently trying to nerf it. Because that's the thing, it started off too great. And, uh, I mean, come on, with 102 speed and 130 attack, yeah. It is no glass cannon either, it has a really fair defensive stat, 108 in its HP and a 95 and 85 in its represented defenses. There is, this guy takes hits really well. Surprisingly well, and it will hurt you because it took it that well. If you're able to outspeed it in the first place, that is. They have like 80 in its special attack, which is not bad. Hell, most pseudos really wish they could be able to pull a mixed set and still hurt stuff the way the Guardian was doing. It. it might be in theory the less defensive of the ones, but it still is a very defensive Pokemon, and it's incredible just going through that. I kind of want to cover that already because. There is no reason doing like a generational route here. It's always been great and it's always been redefined. Um, I do want to say one thing though. The reason that we had any Ubers in generation 4 was because of Sandvale being able to have a 20% evasion boost and Sand made made this guy impossible to deal with. It wasn't until Rough Skin was introduced in his Dream World ability that he was able to be used because there were no outside factors and permanent Sand and to be able to kind of stop it because that's the thing too it was allowed later in generation 6 because of the perma game the permanent weather was gone and so people could use sandals if they wanted to nice hell i've been at mercy of that set before i lost to it in plenty of times um also traces once never mind that it was nice though uh <laughs> it also got a mega evolution there and the Mega Evolution felt like the first time that was trying to nerf it if you want to use this barrel of pokemon you're gonna lose 10 base speed, which pretty much made Mega Guard Jump OU by technicality because no one was using it. The few that were were trying to use a Stick Web or Trick Room Team or even in a Tailwind Team, but besides that, there was no reason ever to use it. 130 attack is you no know, good enough, 170 is just well, that, that's really good enough, but it's overdoing it. But something the Guard Jump never got was Dragon Dance. We're always like an arm's length, like he saw his brethren, he saw Flygon even get it in generation 7. There were so many things and Garchomp got nothing every time. For every introduction of new things, Garchomp didn't get it. I mean, fear because it didn't need it, but it still was kind of fun seeing how Garchomp didn't get any new tools because any new tool would probably break this Pokemon. And um, I, I was it was fun to see, honestly. There are so many factors with this guy that just makes it so incredible. Uh, one set that I really enjoy myself and was something that really came into life in Generation, uh, I believe, 6. Also was really active in Generation 7 too, was um, the Rocky Helmet set with Rough Skin. Basically, punish U-Turner and carry Stealth Rocks and Toxic. It was so annoying. We were talking about a set here that was in theory not speedy or not, I mean, not speedy, I mean defensive. But thanks to these factors, it was defensive enough. And with the wish support from something like Blissey, it was incredible. I love this guy. What a horrible mom to be created. And like I said, it was on the top of every game every time. And due to toxic and chip damage, it was actually doing pretty surprisingly well. And of course, this set killed it carefully and forward to make sure Ferraform was not shaking it either. So yeah, yeah, Garchomp just kind of got it right. But in Generation 8, here is with stuff kind of shifts. It should also mention, by the way, just so I'm staying off track, or no, we're not fucking this up. Um, Tapu Bulu kind of shit Garchomp in essence due to the ter grassy terrain nerfing um, the, um, um, the earthquake. But this guy carried Stomping Tantrum most of the time instead. Dragon Claw and Stomping Tantrum. Just if you switch in with your fairy and then you can stomp. 
double the damage. Yeah, got it right anyway, so fuck it. Incredible. I love this guy, like I said. But it wasn't until Generation 8 where things got kind of weird. Because, yeah, Dragon Dance was now a TM. So the big question was, will, will Garchomp get it? The easy answer is no. Every Mon, pretty much every Mon got it. Hell, even Dragology got uh, a taste for the dance. But Garchomp, I guess, I guess didn't feel the beat. However, he had scales to feel off. And uh, this is something that in my book was so scary that this happened. Because all of a sudden, the things that made Garchomp in theory balance was now going to be turned on his head. You remember when I told you guys about the um, somewhat decent defense? Still a very plausible thing. Garchomp has at least able to do sword stance. And thanks to scale shot, get minus one defense and plus one speed. All of a sudden, Garchomp could do the impossible. It could speed itself up. It could make sure those pesky fairies that could outspeed it and hell, all the monsters in fury could outspeed it are now at the mercy of the chomp. It took him 10 years to get there, but all of a sudden Garchomp was back at it, an apex predator, if <laughs> you want to say. Really, like for me, Garchomp just, it came out of, like it didn't need anything, but it got something. It took it 10 years, but it got it and it was renewing its viability. Garchomp wasn't falling short, but definitely the competition outside it got slightly better every generation. And all of a sudden there were factors to make Garchomp less viable in certain scenarios, but thanks to Scale Shot, it could be used the way it's always been used. A sweeper, a wall breaker, and it does it well, and does it scarily well. Hell, I even see people use Choice Band as Scale Shot, because 130 attack is just enough to stomach things and kill them good. Now, I guess it's good we don't see Mega Pokemon, because I think a Mega Garchomp with Scale Shot would have been... Uh, would have been devastating, honestly. <laughs> But that said, yeah, Garchomp is back at it. It is an absolute buffed mon, and who knew, it required so little to make it great again, because it, in theory, didn't need anything in the first place, or the little thing it got just was too much, almost. <laughs> so that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode, filling in the Garchomp void, and uh, if you guys want to see any certain Pokemon in Buffed or Nerfed, make sure to write it down down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care, alright?